Winter has arrived at Moat Cottage and so far it's been wet and foggy with blasts of icy Antarctic cold air. Much of homesteading life in winter here is spent in the kitchen or by the fire in the lounge room, unlike summer when it's just not practical to be inside at all. I've been dehydrating brown onions at 55 degrees Celsius for about 10 hours. They're dry and crispy, so they're ready. Dehydrated onion is best kept whole like this and stored in airtight containers as it absorbs moisture quickly if it's in powdered form. I'm blending the onion and adding sea salt to make an onion salt. You can add dried herbs to this as well. I like to add my herbs when cooking so I have full flavour control when creating my dishes so I don't add herbs now. My daughter Nikki's been really sick with the flu. It's not the flu everyone's been expecting here, but it is a nasty flu and she's never had the flu before. I, on the other hand, think I have a cold. I'm not really sure where I got that from because I haven't been out for quite a few weeks. So we're all doing the best trying to heal and using the normal natural remedies that we do use like fire cider and fermented garlic. I also grow herbs in the garden that would be good for healing colds and flus. So that will be my plan B. It's quince season and the variety that grows around here are not really suitable for eating as they are. However, they are delicious when turned into a cheese or a quince paste and they're a wonderful addition to a cheese platter. Quince cheese stores well in the sealed container in the freezer for at least a year in my experience. So it's worth making and standing over the hot stove top stirring. It's nice and warm on a cold, wet winter's day. The quince mixture can go straight into these silicon moulds and then it can cool down and set. Then I take them out of the moulds, they pop straight out and then they go into the sealed container in the freezer until I need them. And you don't even have to defrost them. They can go straight on the cheese platter because they don't freeze like normal other foods. It's sort of, you can basically just cut it straight from frozen. It's pretty amazing. Although it does have more flavour when it gets to room temperature like a good wine or cheese, I guess. As soon as there's a break in the weather, I head out into the vegetable garden to see what we'll be eating for the day. I love that we have produce all year around here. Although our winter veggies don't grow in summer and our summer veggies don't grow in winter. So we do eat seasonally, but there's always something that's the highlight of the meal. Today it's going to be turnips. They're lovely and sweet at this time of year and they will be delicious roasted for dinner. The yacons are nearly ready and my snow peas are in flour, so it won't be long until they're ready to harvest too. Citrus fruit is abundant all winter here. I pick enough for the day so they're nice and fresh for my family to get their vitamin C dose in, which will support our bodies in fighting off the colds and flus. The turnip greens are perfect for the Muscovy ducks and chickens. 
A large percentage of the Muscovy duck diet is fresh greens, so it's really good to share. Otherwise, I would put some in the worm farm and the compost, and that would end up going back into the soil. Of course, turnip greens are fantastic in soups as well, but I have other greens to go in my soups. Homegrown turnips are so tasty and their flavour is sweeter than a potato and they're faster to grow. My root cellar is in the ground as it's good conditions here for leaving root vegetables in the soil. Purple top turnips store between four to six months in a root cellar or in the ground if you have good drainage and no hard freeze like us. To roast, peel and cut the turnips and place on a baking tray. I like to add melted butter, onion salt, and my favorite herbs. I like dried marjoram, basil, rosemary, oregano, parsley, and thyme with some capsicum flakes. And I mix it all up so that the turnips are all coated nicely and evenly. And then they get roasted in a hot oven until they're ready. While the vegetable garden has fabulous drainage, the front pathways are definitely a different situation altogether. It's very muddy. It's just horrible. I am trying to get more straw, but the prices and the shortages have made it almost impossible. The prices are over four times more than what I normally pay for straw, so I'm still working on it. A family member has acquired a wart on their foot, so my first response is to go to the apothecary cupboard. I've not treated a wart before, but warts are a virus, so I'll try a pure oregano essential oil with a pure frankincense oil, mixed with coconut oil as the carrier oil. My patient is not pregnant, so I can use the oregano oil without any concerns and it's important to use a carrier oil for a topical application as the oils can cause skin sensitivity and make the skin itchy and red. I'm adding two tablespoons of coconut oil to 25 drops of the frankincense and the oregano oil, so 25 drops of each. I'll get the patient to apply the liquid twice a day to the wart and see if there's an improvement in a month's time. I'll be sure to leave a comment down below after a month to let you know if it's working or not.
I think winter is a wonderful time for writing letters and cards. I kind of envy the people in the Northern Hemisphere who have Christmas at winter time for this reason alone. Oh, maybe the cooking as well. Winter cooking is good. Apart from birthdays, which of course are very special, we don't have any major celebrations in winter here. You just have to make your own traditions to get you through the winter. Late on a cold, stormy winter's evening, when the house is quiet, it's nice to grab a jar of summertime off the shelf for a quick supper. Even though it's only the start of winter, I know we have a long way to go to get to the warm spring and it's rewarding and uplifting enjoying the work of the past three months before. Getting cosy with a bowl of homegrown and preserved sunshine makes winter bearable and a worthy season. What are you doing in the season you're in? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.